Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel if you're new. My name is LJ and you're watching No Clutch Garage. And today I have a special treat for you guys. I'm actually going to be installing one of the most complete catch can systems out there for the P58. And it's not only a catch can system, it's also a PCB delete for the Gen 1 P58. Let's go over it a little bit, everything that comes with the package and I'll show you how to install it. I do want to say though, first of all, that I have had this system for about six months now. I did make a video on it, or I did film a video on it, but I lost all the footage. So I decided to go back and try it again. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. I have set everything on my car back the way it was before the catch can was on. So that way we can have a complete rundown and breakdown of how to do this. So let's go ahead and do it. All right guys, so here we have the catch can system. This is the catch can. It's got three ports as you can see, the breather on top, and then there's a little oil plug at the bottom. It's pretty basic, I mean, we have the can, we have the brace that holds the can, we have all the lines, and then this cap is actually the PCB delete. And the way this works is we have to remove the cap that is shielding the diaphragm on our valve cover. This will go in there instead, and this middle plug right here is essentially what's going to serve as a head port plug. This should be pretty good for anybody that's having any PCV issues, or even if you're not, and you just want to avoid it altogether, you can go ahead and buy this and install it. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install it, how to put it all together, pre-installation, and then we're going to get it done. Hey guys, so before I begin, I do want to say that this setup is for the Big Boost bottom mount kit. This is slightly different from, you know, the other catch can setups. And it's also considered the V2, the one with the two holes at the top on the cap. So I'm going to show you the setup is pretty much the same for this and a few others. But the first thing that we're going to have to do, apart from removing this PCV breather hose, which you would have on like a stock setup, you want to go ahead and take these two off. So these two bolts are going to come off. This is where the brace is going to go. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but first let's take these off. And to take these off, guys, these are 13 millimeter bolts. So take your 13 millimeter socket. You might need an impact, but be careful because they will snap. Now here, guys, I do want to show you the appropriate way to set this up. So you will have your catch cam, and this is the back side of it. And this is the brace that will go on it. So you want the brace to be in this direction, and then you're going to put the can you gotta put the can right here. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these bolts from the hardware kit. I'm gonna stick it through, make sure there's a washer on there. Stick it through to the back side. When you get to the back side, you're gonna grab another washer and then you're gonna grab one of the nuts that is included. And these are these nuts will lock in place. These are locking nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. So Go ahead and take that, put it in, and then put your nut in. And then in order to secure it, I want it to be flush and even. And then I'm going to take an 11 millimeter wrench. I'm going to grab the nut from the bottom right here. And that's just to set it in place, right? All right, and once it's, well, it's secured, we're going to grab our 11 millimeter socket. We're going to torque it in place. Make sure you don't rush it guys, especially if you want it to look good and tidy. Alright guys, once this is in place, I wanted to go ahead and install it on the car and then we'll go ahead and do everything else. Alright guys, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my can with the brace and depending on how your lines are set up, mine are going through here and just to kind of clean things up, I put everything under the pal. But basically it's gonna sit right here. There is a hole right here for this nipple. So it's, you can guide yourself that way. So you can see, we have the clearance issues right here with the wastegate. So go ahead and thread in your bolts. So be careful with these guys. The torque spec for these is 56 newton meters and then 90 degree angle. And if you have an impact gun, just use it to, to bolt it all the way in. Don't use it to actually torque it in. Use a torque wrench to torque it properly. Okay. 
There you go. Now it's torqued in properly and we can move on. All right, guys. And before we go through the process of removing the cap right there, I want to show you this cap very quickly. So you can see there are O-rings everywhere in there and then there's some set screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of lube. I'm going to lubricate these O-rings right here. And I'm also going to put a little bit on it right here on this ring but I uh, just want to show you the cap these set screws are important so make sure you remember those and yeah let's go ahead I'm gonna grab some of this I use this super lube multi-purpose synthetic grease and we'll lube these up and then we'll put it on so for this you just grab a little dab you don't need to do anything too much and then just put it around like this and then uh, I'm just gonna put some around here and that's it now that we have that cap prepped, we can begin removing the cap on our valve cover. And to remove the valve cover cap, you can use a screwdriver to take this out. I don't like to use a screwdriver because the tips are generally too thin. I want to use something like a crowbar. And so what we're going to do with this crowbar, you also have to be careful with applying too much pressure. So what I like to do is I'm going to set it right here and I'm slowly gonna push it up so we're gonna go around and you will hear it come off this it's gonna dry it out in my case my PCB is perfectly fine so I don't want to damage this just in case all right guys now we come to the part where we have to install our cap Ross racing cap we're gonna install it like this Sure, it just goes in smooth. I'm going to remove the oil cap because it's kind of in the way. And for this procedure, guys, I do recommend that you are very careful because you don't want to drop anything in here. So if it makes you feel better, you can definitely set something. So nothing falls in. So we're gonna go ahead and set the screw in. You don't have to uh, go in too far, just as long as you feel it stop. That should be good. Just wanna make sure the cap is all the way in. It's not coming out. It's good, it's in place we can go ahead and do the rest of the installation. The rest of the installation is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. So first of all, we have this short line with this banjo fitting. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. And then guys, what you guys want to use, you guys are probably gonna want to find one of these. This is a non-marring wrench for aluminum such as that so basically so your aluminum anodization doesn't get scratched up or anything like that it's also softer so it's not going to damage any of that hardware so let's go ahead and use it these have o-rings inside of the lines so for example if you look in here you can see that orange in there is one of the o-rings that has been in here for a while and that's that's what we want. So make sure you verify that each one of these lines has an O-ring inside before you install it. Now it's back when it's installed. I'm gonna go ahead and use my adjustable non marring wrench. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if you guys can see right back there, that line just connects and goes straight into the cap. All right, for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and grab our long line. It's this one right here. This one is basically gonna be this. And there we go. There's that portion all done. And of course, the last part to this, we're going to grab this line right here, which has this angle line, and then this one right here, which is going to go right there. So you take it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. And then this side, this one's going to go into the crankcase breather. The reason we move up the rings is so that they don't get damaged. And that's basically it, guys. Move this. this and we're all done. 
And guys, this is what it looks like. Looks really good. It's matching my manifold. It's going to match the rest of my pipes. So I really like it. These lines going all over the place are kind of too much for me, to be honest. I really wish that this design was just a tiny bit cleaner. But other than that, it's a good design. I like this brace. Obviously, it could be done better. But this is also like an early production unit. So there are some things that are not perfected that have been corrected now. I don't like this line right here. But it is what it is. I mean, it's not its not too intrusive. At the end of the day, it does the job. It works as intended. Could it be cleaner? Sure. But as far as the utility, the utility is all there. And honestly, like this is still largely a very young platform. So it's, it's cool to see stuff like this on these cars. But definitely recommend the can. I've been running it, like I said, for about six months. I've had zero issues with it. It catches oil. I haven't had to catch too much oil because we hadn't raised the boost a whole lot. I started seeing some oil in the catch can at around 40, 42 PSI and that's been about it. Anything below that, that can was bone dry for months. You can also jerry-rig the bottom to you know drip somewhere out of the way but being that it's on the hot side i don't like the idea of the can being over the turbo just because of my previous experience with my other car catching on fire and uh, you know there's with there even being a chance of any oil leaking like that's that's always in the back of my head for this setup if you're not really concerned about that go ahead and get it it's a it's a good can as long as everything is sealed you're not going to have a single leak and the only other thing that I would say is that I highly recommend there is an adapter that goes right here that has an additional line to wrap all the fumes to the back of your car. If you don't like that oil smell, I would definitely consider investing some money and putting that towards that modification because it's fine. I don't mind the oil smell when I'm racing, but if I'm dailying and I come to a stop and it starts venting, it just, I don't like that smell going into my cabin. But other than that it's fine so guys that is the installation of the ross performance oil catch can and pcb delete do i recommend it yes i recommend it it's a it's a good mod to have if you need it i will say that in capital letters if you need it if your pcb is fine please guys do not fix what's not broken for my case my pcb was fine but i'm also running very high boost pressures at this point so the more crankiest ventilations i have the better at least for me so this is perfect for me i recommend it and i've given you all my thoughts this is coming from somebody that's used it for about six months nothing really negative to say and i i can't wait to see future iterations of the setup but with that guys thank you for watching thank you for tuning in and watching this installation if you have any more questions leave them down in the description down below i will leave the link to this product in the description down below as well as well as Matt's instagram so you guys can reach out thank you very much and i'll talk to you later peace